Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well. And we have out-of-control wildfires raging in Florida Panhandle, destroying dozens of homes, forcing evacuations. And one of these actually started out as a prescribed burn. It's going to be a control burn. And, um, you yeah, know, unfortunately, it went out of control. There's some video here for you guys to take a look at. So you have more than a dozen homes burned down, at least 500 people forced to evacuate. The three blazes that are raging in northwest Florida have been exacerbated by winds and dry weather conditions. One fire in Santa Rosa County, which tore through 2,000 acres, shut down 9 miles Interstate 10, was just 20% contained when officials gave 9 p.m. press conference on Wednesday night. Nicknamed the Five Mile Swamp Fire, the blaze began as a prescribed burn on private property Monday, but went out of control quickly. And there's two other wildfires going on. The Hearst Hammock Fire, which burned in Escambia County, has burned 60 acres as of Wednesday. was 40% uh, contained there. And then another blaze in Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa County burned an additional 70 acres and was 20% uh, contained. And the National Weather Service warned that low humidity, gusty winds, and ongoing drought conditions could promote the fires causing the agency to issue a red, red flag warning. Several videos for you guys to check out. Uh, feels like we should be talking about California, but yeah, this is actually Florida. As we see so many different changes going on across the world. Here you have flash floods damage or destroy thousands of homes, and this is in northern Afghanistan. You know, the, the times we're in right now, it's just like, it feels like it's just one thing after another, does it not? And it's thickening it's not slowing down it's not sparsing up it's thickening it seems like yeah and you know you were talking about an astrological conjunction that's going on now that's um kind of a hard one it is very difficult we have three planets um going into retrograde and that can have people like kind of slow down reflect look back it can cause like a drag in the energy it can slow the energy down makes people not feel too good so yeah so we have that going on as well right now. Intense Arctic outbreak expected over much of Ontario, Canada and parts of eastern U.S. Record cold and possible rare May snow, as you see this out of the New York Times. Say, uh, say a brief goodbye to nice weather as, you know, some places are going to actually end up getting snow. As you see over here, this is up in Vermont. And... Uh, you know, you guys probably know if you've been with us for a while, you know, when I got the camper originally, I wasn't going to set up a homestead right away. I wanted to go and take Cindy on a tour of some of the places that I love. And I, I really did want to take her up through uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, perhaps Maine, and cut across Canada uh, with the camper after going first down and visiting uh, good friends and stuff down in Florida and the Carolinas. But obviously with the world situation, uh, we postponed that whole idea. And then we just decided, okay, well, it's time to grow a little food, uh, you know, and we're going to have to postpone our thought of a trip. And so, because Vermont and New Hampshire are gorgeous. They are beautiful states if you guys haven't uh, been up there as a little kid. Growing up in Connecticut, uh, that's where I would go with my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, things like that. Um, when we had summer vacation, and I spent a few summers up in Maine as a youth as well. Uh, Tenants Harbor area, Rockport, beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous area. And lightning kills a Chester man, South Carolina storm that spawned to tornadoes and hail. And, you know, the storms, they're, they're going to get more and more intense in the past day, US as that starts to go off on its own there. And we have violent storm hitting Western Australia, leaving tens of thousands without power there as well. This one packed winds up to 80 miles an hour and it toppled trees and power grids as well. 55,000 homes without electricity. Everywhere we look, we see it's, it's extremes. Water restrictions announced in Auckland amid worsening drought over on the North Island of New Zealand. And then we have mudslides burying at least 45 people in Liberia. Africa has been getting pounded as, as so many places across the globe. And, you know, obviously 
there's not likely to be survivors if you're looking for bodies buried, you know, so far underneath the mud with that crane. That's a very sad situation. And, you know, check out Saudi Arabia in the desert. It looks like there's snow. It's all hail. Intense storms, as we see. And uh, this area, Abha, is situated about 7,450 feet above sea level. So it's in the mountains and it is pretty high up. And we have a deep 6.1 quake that hits Papua New Guinea area. And uh, this, was at, this was at a depth of 306 miles, according to EMSC. And luckily, uh, not major damage or anything like that where it's located. Same thing with the 6.8, which is a pretty big quake. This is the Banda Sea, intermediate depth in Indonesia. <clears throat> Thankfully, these did not hit massive population centers. And here we see Russia is set to launch its first satellite for monitoring the Arctic. And the Arctic is uh, an interesting area, and it is an area that we, you know, could have the potential for some confrontations over as resources, you know, around the globe are dwindling. And, you know, of course, there's been a lot of rhetoric and a lot of tension between certain countries which we haven't gotten into lately, uh, trying to focus more on solutions instead of all the problems the world has because it's pretty damn obvious, <laughs> all the stuff that's going on. It is. <laughs> it's so obvious. Yeah, I mean, so many people are covering everything that's going on right now. And, uh, you know, we're not about getting views and we've never been about, you know, trying to make money doing this it's it's not about getting rich uh i personally detest the system that we're in i think it's the source of how we are controlled so you know what we're looking at is we're going to try to focus more on solutions you know how you could heal yourselves naturally how you could do uh what you can do with energy work how you could grow your own food you know how you could live perhaps an off-grid lifestyle and, and anything we could do to distance ourselves from all the control that we see all over the globe which you know the control is just going to crazy new levels it is and there's certain medicinal plants you can grow and you can add um, things in them to make them even more powerful maybe we'll do a show on that sometime most definitely so osiris rex that means osiris the king succeeds in sampling rehearsal taking a step closer to asteroid Bennu so this is NASA's you ever wonder why they always name things after mythology all the time you know it's always the mythology that they're always naming things so you know this is yet another NASA mission and this one's uh, to go basically to an asteroid and get some samples of materials to bring back. And maybe they'll bring back some other stuff as well. Ooh. <laughs> Unseasonal thunderstorms strike Israel. And, you know, that's part of the changes that we have going on. And you see the northern region of Israel to the Negev Desert in the south. Beautiful, isn't it, the color? Uh, but, yeah, it recorded 828 lightning strikes on Tuesday morning afternoon. Unprecedented number for this time of year up by a staggering 2,748% from May's monthly average of 30, as we could, you know, throw all the old norms just straight out the window. And we see global temperatures suffer second largest two-month drop in recorded history. And in fact, you know, our average right now is the same spot where we were back in like the mid-80s. So, you know, you get these l huge swings but when it comes down to it, um, you know, temperatures are about the same as it was in 87. The month of May brings record and sometimes historic cold to both hemispheres. And again, extremes. And we still have all sorts of environmental damage going on, which, you know, is really such an atrocity on such a huge scale. Here you see Amazon tribes in Ecuador suffer water, water shortage following a massive oil spill and obviously there's going to be a lot of loss of life with this as well think about these tribes and these people whenever i think about you know how they are living a stone age life in some areas and then we have our technology and i i wonder about uh 
Atlantis and, and other you know, civilizations in the past that perhaps had way more technology than most of the world and how they would be just blown away and think these were gods, but these are just humanoid beings too. Yeah, humanoid beings that make mistakes. And look how they're dragging these poor people into the system. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just horrible. And we see Earth's north magnetic pole is heading towards Siberia, and we know why. It has to do with what's going on inside the Earth, partly, as there's two magnetic blobs. Uh, they use the word blobs of magma. Uh, well, you know, liquid iron, which, again, highly uh, magnetic. And there's one in the Siberian area. There's one in northern Canada. And apparently the one in northern Canada is weakening when the one over in Siberia is strengthening so that's pulling the north magnetic pole over in that direction but what's really causing all that too because there's changes going on on a much bigger scale there's changes going on on all the planets in our solar system and in our section of the galaxy as well has something to do with perhaps where we are perhaps and more signs of the times sky turns blood red over niger and it was a dust storm that did it. There's video here from Rupley, which always has that disclaimer. This is the Russian government, you know, so you better not trust them. It's, you know, that's what Wikipedia does, and that's what YouTube does, and we know, we know all about that. So, it's raining plasma on the sun. Massive prominence going on. And as we know, we've been in a, a big grand solar minimum with... Part of what's going on, the sun's been you know, extremely quiet, but we can see it's stirring to life a little bit. It's getting a little bit more active, but the danger is with the magnetosphere down because of everything going on, inclu including a magnetic pole reversal, when we get some CMEs from the sun, it might be lights out for a while. That's the bottom line. So we have to be prepared again as best as we can. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, maybe even turn off your electricity for a little bit and see what you need so you have it <coughs> handy. So astronomers find closest black hole ever, and they warn there may be some even closer. How ominous. Are they trying to get us afraid? Um, Or is it predictive programming? Yes, maybe both going on. So this is in our backyard, a thousand light years away, which sounds like it's very, very far, but in the big scheme of things, it's not far away. And you might be saying, well, where is it? I don't see it. Well, it's because you can't see it because it's a black hole. A black hole. <laughs> so we have to trust them. <laughs> oh, okay. We trust them. Sure. 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 Um, you know, a little facetious there for those of you that are catching that. Highly detailed images reveal evidence of ancient rivers on Mars. And yeah, you know, there's so many legends and lines of thought that say that before Earth was inhabited, Mars was. And it kind of feels right to me. It does. It feels right to me, too. I mean, there's definitely uh, something with the history. It just feels right. Feel it. Well, in the Sumerian texts as well, the Gigi were there. And, uh, you know, then they came here as well. So, you know, Mars, God of War, Ares, the Ram. Interesting. You know, there's, there's so many connections, and we've, we've done a lot of that in going into the Bible and the ancient Sumerian texts, and I actually had something lined up for that and then decided to see what was going on Earth change-wise and was like, oh, my God, okay, we better do this first because there's so much happening. Ten emergency items that will always be valuable. A knife. Yeah, I mean, just think about it. If there's no knives around. And again, you know, in these times, you know, we, we really are, well, I mean, we need to be prepared. And I think, again, the people that were prepared are doing way better right now than the people that weren't prepared, you know. And there's always things you could do to prepare. Hatchet, axe, and saw, basic necessities. And think also in terms of if the power is out, do you have hand tools, mm -hmm. sharpening tools? And again, if your only thing is an electric sharpener, then, uh -uh. you know, think about the power going out. Multi-tool, paracord, cast iron cookware. Very usable. We have a whole bunch of that. Um, honey, liquor, 
Liquor could always be used for barter trade and uh, disinfectant as well. Aluminum foil. Don't underestimate that, right? And oil lamps or some sort of lamp that you wouldn't need electricity for. Another thing that we should be thinking about. Absolutely. You know, you can even get those little LED ones and they don't take up much space and they last forever. They really do. I mean, I got some a few years ago and we're still using them and it's it's still the original batteries I put in and uh, they throw off a lot of light. So, you know, and also just stock up on batteries. Think about that as well. So my friends, as always, thank you so much for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Uh, that keeps us afloat in these times. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't be able to keep going with this as we can, as we have been. Anybody that's interested in a Vedic chart reading, you know, get in contact with us and Cindy could do that as well as any sort of biofuel tuning and energy work, which we have been um, pretty busy with. Yeah, we have. And anybody who is waiting for a chart, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit behind, but I I hopefully I've been in touch with you all. It's just, it's beautiful. I'm grateful it's getting busy, but just understand it's busy. <laughs> yes, yes. And she's so good at them too. So not that I'm biased. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. As always, God bless. Stay safe and namaste. Namaste.